Okay, welcome to Monaco 301. Um, the reason I'm doing this is I stumbled across this design a couple of years ago and I pretty much dismissed it as being t too difficult to do. With each one of these individual pieces it would take more time than I had to try and align each one of them and e even worse to even try to make it look good. So, but, while I was doing this design for the Primo here, this is the rudder for it, I stumbled across a technique that not only made this appear possible, but turns out it may not be all that, all that tough after all. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and show you exactly how I plan on doing this. Um, I'm going to assume that everyone's familiar with the Windex method, and even if not, it's not that big a deal as I'll probably wind up covering each point as we go along. So with that in mind, uh, let's get this show on the road. So as you can see here, I have a sheet of glass and that's what I wind up doing all my cutting on. First thing you do is just give it a light dusting of Windex and then take your covering with the backing off and the adhesive side down and you lay it on top of the glass. Now the, mon the Windex will let the glass stick to it. Now the next thing you do is you take a credit card or a plastic card. This one here is just one of the old key cards from a hotel we stayed at and you want to try and squeegee out as much of the excess Windex as you can and what that will do is that causes this stuff to stick to the glass and it gives you a nice surface which you, that you can cut on so once you squeegee all the stuff out on the edge take a paper towel and just blot off the excess okay now that you have your monocoat stuck down to the top of this of the glass and uh, the top of it's dry because you don't want any uh, any windex to soak into your paper take, a, some, take some masking tape and lay your design down on top of your on top of your monocoat, making sure that you got the edge, making sure that it doesn't go off the edges, because that would frustrate you more than anything to have to redo it all. And just lay one piece of tape along the bottom, and that should iron this thing down. Now, what is important to remember here is that you need to start from the top and make sure that as you're cutting along each one of these designs, try and try and slowly work your way down to the down to the bottom. That way, it'll keep the paper nice and stiff so that it won't want to try to wiggle and move on you. Um, so once we get this cut out, then uh, I'll show you the next step. Um, one key point to remember is you're going to wind up going through a lot of blades. Change them as often as needed. As soon as you're starting to cut through the paper and it drags a little bit, change your blade. Because what will wind up happening is it'll snag and it can tear the monocoat underneath and that will just, well, you know what I got to tell you, that's going to pretty much ruin your day. Okay, and here you can see slowly but surely, if we peel this back, it's starting to take shape. Um, I've been on this for maybe 10 minutes at the most, and uh, it's, once again, this is actually turning out to be fairly nice. So, now it's going to come the hard part, in that we have each in individually cut pieces of monaco for the teeth, as well as uh, holes inside of the jawline over here. So this is probably going to take me a fair amount of time and this is where um, this technique that I'm going to show you that I stumbled on accident is really going to come into play. So give me a couple of minutes to figure this uh, or to finish cutting this out and uh, I'll explain to you how I'm going to put that onto the rudder. Okay so now we have the rest of the design cut out and there you go. So you peel off the paper because we don't need this anymore. You can go ahead and throw it away. So now we're left with the problem of how are we going to get this design onto uh, whatever it is it's going to go into. And here is the million dollar idea. I don't know exactly sure how I stumbled across it, but sure enough it works. You take uh, the clad press and seal. If you're not familiar with this. It's basically the same thing as saran wrap, but they put a little bit, they put a little coating on the inside of this, so it's just very slightly tacky. So, cut a piece of this, ever so big, lay it down on your design, and I think the glue they use is, is very similar to um, like what you'd find on the little post-it notes. So what you need to do is you need to rub it down on onto the monocoat that you'd, uh, that you'd already placed down here and you'll be able to tell when it sticks because it'll, it'll go from having little, t it'll, it'll go from being kind of like little tiny spots, it'll just turn clear or the same color as the covering. So once you 
rub this down. And I would imagine on this design, this is the first time I've ever I've done it with this one. Seeing as how each one of these teeth are individual pieces, you really want to make sure that it's good and stuck. Once you're done with that, you can you'll just peel it off the glass, and your whole pattern will be stuck to this press and seal. And then you can just lay it down on your lay it down on whatever you're going to stick it to. So we just about got this finished. Um, if it doesn't stick to this right away, take, be very careful when you're peeling this up because you can always lay it back down and rub your fingers to cross it again to get it to, to get it to stick. And if it really doesn't want to start, you can also get in there with a razor blade and just kind of lift up the corners. So just about got this done. Let's go ahead and try and peel this off. So far, so good. Okay. And there you go, you have your monocoat now. It's stuck to the inside of this press and seal. So then, next thing you do is you need to take whatever it is you're going to stick it to. So in this particular case, this is going to be going on a mojo. So, take your uh, your piece down, and then we're going to use the Windex method one more time. So just get again, give it a light dusting. And because of the press and seal itself, I'm just kind of going to blot off some of the extra, but just leave enough on there so that it just kind of has a light mist. Take your covering, pick about right where you want it to be. The nice thing about Windex is it allows you to reposition. Try and squeegee out as much as you can. Alright, and believe it or not, this right now is going to be the most difficult part. At least if you're anything like I am, you want to see it finished. But the hardest thing to do is to just leave it alone. Because you need to let this, you need to let the Windex dry overnight. What it does is, I'm not exactly sure why, but it, it seems to activate the adhesive just a little bit, and it, it causes it to stick to the covering, not solid, but pretty good. You'll still have to go over the edges with trim sol with either trim solvent or an iron, but uh, that's it. So leave the press and seal on. and I'll see you in the morning okay we're back now for part two of the million dollar tip is the, the adhesive on this apparently gets real not so much tacky but it uh, it almost turns into nothing as soon as you apply a little bit of heat so you get your heat gun and you want to make sure that the vents are all the way open otherwise it gets too hot and just give it a Gonna go over it real, real quick just to get it warm, and it peels off like it's not even there. Once again, just go go nice and slow. Take your time, but uh, you'll see that the mono, you see that the black is stuck to the red fairly well, and this is just peeling right off. So once I get about halfway, and especially right right around here, I'm gonna make sure that we get this nice and warm. But uh, it should peel right off, and then make sure you go over it one more time with uh, either go over the edge with the trim solvent on pieces like this that are really small I just go over it with an iron the odds of getting bubbles inside of this are pretty slim just because the pieces are so small and I like to seal the entire thing just to keep any oil or grease and goo out of it so one more time Okay, and there you go.